Hey guys, this is Mikko. In this video I want to talk about the order of layers when I choose to use layers. Of course, you don't need to have any if you are painting. Sometimes just painting on one layer is good enough. And it has its own benefits. The whole thing can look more unified when you need to be aware of your edges and when you avoid them. That can give it more painterly look. I just want to get that out of the way. Even though I'm talking about layers here, in no way are you required to have layers in use in your painting. In fact, if you're just starting out, I would recommend that you paint on a single layer and just not think about that whole aspect at all, because it can all get quite technical. It's really not that important. None of this stuff is something that you cannot figure out later when you get to it. But in this specific illustration, I already had a quite clear idea what I want this painting to be, which is, if you are aware of how my painting process goes, that's pretty rare for me. So I already knew what the elements in this piece I wanted to have. Having them in separate layer made sense. The reason why it makes sense for this specific illustration is because the layers are going to help me get this illustration done much faster. And considering the complex elements that I am going to have here, any amount of added speed is going to be a huge help. A lot of you are asking in the comments how long it takes for me to complete one of these more complex illustrations. And and for this, the duration of the video that I had to condense down is over five hours. So that gives you some impression of how long it takes to finish these pieces. However, and this is something that I don't record at all, it wouldn't be entertaining to watch in any way, is that when I'm not painting, sometimes I just have the iPad on, I use the kickstand of the iPad cover, and I have the painting in full screen, for example, when I'm watching TV or doing some other work. If I have this at the corner of my eye and I just glance at it, for example, when I'm having my morning coffee or doing other stuff, just having it there makes it easier for me to process what I'm doing, what things are important, and is the painting coming along the way that I want it to. And then I go through my checklist of composition stuff and then I just look at the piece and figure out when I continue working what am I going to continue working on. So you never just want to be mindlessly painting because it can amount to a lot of work but if you do that work with focus in mind of what I'm going to fix here and what are the aspects that I feel like are more important to this piece and then just work on those first and not focus on like some small details which can be very entertaining to paint but aren't progressing the visual impact of your piece. Maybe it's just asking yourself sometimes that what is the visual impact that I'm going for here? Is this element working towards that? Is this element working towards that? If it's not, maybe it's distracting. Do I need to cut it out? And it's those simple questions that I go through over and over when I'm not working on the painting but it is in my back crown just as a part of my life somehow. So I spend a lot of time just staring at my paintings. It's not really working, but it's not not working, if that makes sense to you. So I promised to explain the layer order, so here goes. In this piece, and pretty much in most pieces, if I have a sky element in the background, if I'm not working on a single layer, I have the sky as a separate background element. And if you paid attention in the beginning, I painted the blue sky on orange color. And this just helps me to get more of that like color variation happening in the sky, because I never want the colors to be too flat. And if I have an area in a painting that is just a big gradient like this guy here, I usually try to paint it by hand first. If I feel like the texture is too distracting, I might use Gaussian Blur to get rid of some of that texture later. But usually just having something that is painted to me personally, and this is just my thing, I think it just like adds more richness to the colors and it's more enjoyable to work on something like that. If it's just one flat color, all the elements that I'm going to paint on top of it that are going to have all of these like value and hue variations on it. They are gonna look like they are just like copy and pasted from different elements and it's not going to look like everything in the painting is done with the same technique. And as usual, I'm using my own brush here 
and it's one brush and I'm using the same brush for the entire painting. I'm not changing the brush at any stage of the game because it's just not that important <laughs> and I say this every time and it's true. I'm pretty happy with the way that this brush blends so far so it's almost done. I'm still not happy with the like the maximum opacity of it but I'm going to get this fixed. Just when I was painting this I wasn't that interested in working with the whole brush stuff because sometimes when a brush is good enough you can just paint with it. You don't always need to go and search for the perfect tool and even even though I can make my own brushes, it's something that's just not that important. The low opacity of this brush at this stage, it does have its own benefits and I decided that since this iceberg element in this illustration is such a big part of this illustration, for here having these low opacity strokes makes sense. And by low opacity strokes I mean that the inherently this brush has some transparency in it. If you look at the left opacity bar on Pro create it's at 100% most of the whole process and that low opacity just comes from the fact that I am pressing the screen lightly and that gives this sort of like transparent brush strokes. So the layers I got completely sidetracked okay <laughs> so the background is the sky and on top of that I have the sea and the iceberg and then the island element so these are the three main elements in the whole illustration and even though I have different working layers here at some points of the process these three elements are the main ones that I flattened them all down to because even if you have multiple layers having these sort of like main layers that you want to preserve it just keeps things more easy. If you have 20 different layers and they are all equally important, it can get really easy to get lost and just spend a lot of time with just like technically managing your layers because that stuff can get out of hand really easily. So even though it sometimes seems like I'm using 10 different <laughs> clipping masks and they all have layer masks on clipping masks, that stuff is all based on these three main layers. So those working file layers, they aren't that important to the structure of this whole file. Because I'm sure that this has happened to you like it has for me many times that when you're painting a picture that has many layers on it and then you accidentally select a wrong layer and then you have tons of work from two different main elements on two different layers and then it just completely breaks the whole system and then you just want to flatten them all down or start over like it, it can be a mess <laughs> really so I'm aware of that and I try to avoid that as much as possible. I decided at this point that I am going to get rid of this other character silhouette that I had drawn on the beach because I thought it's more important for the message of this piece to be a conversation between this one dude surfer dude on the beach and the iceberg that is drifting on the sea. Uh, I think this is this weird conversation conversation that I had with myself when I was on this road trip to Turku and on our way back here to Helsinki we saw this skiing resort and this skiing resort wasn't in use anymore it had been closed down many years ago and the hill had completely grown over with trees and grass and there weren't any ski lifts and this is because in that area the winters aren't that cold anymore that it would be financially profitable to keep a skiing resort going. I just thought that it was interesting how this wasn't a conversation with somebody else. It was just me looking at that mountain that used to be covered with snow during winters. And last winter here in Finland there were almost like no snow at all. And it's these like small markers when you notice that the global warming is affecting your own environment and it's not something that you are seeing on the internet or on the news or as a graph but like something like concrete that affects your own surroundings basically. <laughs> I don't know if I'm explaining this as well as the picture does but I think this idea came from that experience and I wanted it to be on this sort of like very flat island because the flat islands are slowly sinking into the sea because of the sea levels rising and yeah this is about the end of the world. I wanted to make a picture that isn't like preachy but it's still 
I wanted to achieve something that is like beautiful to look at, but still would probably make you think. <laughs> I don't know. At least it's a way for me to process these thoughts for myself. So that's why I made it. Back to the layer stuff. This guy is drawn on its own separate layer. So the line art is on its own separate layer because I wanted to just get the proportions right. And for that line art, I have drawn also the legs. As you can see, there are the edges of the shorts and and you can see both legs even though I know that they are not going to be part of the picture but for me personally even if it might seem like it's unnecessary work just knowing where that anatomy is happening behind the board just makes it easier and faster for me to paint than just try to guess it where the feet appear after the surfboard and then having to fix it later or at least having this reference point that's why the guy is on its own separate layer and the surfboard is on its own separate layer for most of the painting and this is also because I am adjusting the skin tones and the surfboard itself many times to make them kind of fit the rest of the picture. Whenever painting these sort of like smaller elements in the scene it's very easy to forget that the colors are supposed to fit in with the rest of the painting because you are kind of when you go into a separate layer you are working in isolation so it's important to also zoom out and maybe just have those coffee breaks when you are just looking at the zoomed out version of your painting and just like feeling out the vibe that like am I feeling the atmosphere of this piece already can I feel what the temperature is like there and what is the whole like soundscape can I feel the mood of the piece and if you can't feel that like then maybe having these questions that like what is there that is distracting me from this mood that I'm trying to get to and those are the answers that only you can answer for yourself because most of all I think you have to always paint for yourself even when doing practice. In fact I wanted to say my own weird opinion about practice here because when thinking about this whole YouTube channel and when teaching art for concept art students it's kind of the same but it's not quite the same. That is because tutorials inherently they are kind of like passive lectures that you watch but when the concept art students in my class watch my lecture it's always part of this assignment of art that they are doing themselves and I think that at the end of the assignments they are trying to have as finished piece as humanly possible and that's mostly because of the social pressure of the class just showing your art to the other people in the class and knowing that that is going to be part of the feedback session later I think it makes people work a little bit harder I know that this was one of the feedback points from my last course that one of the students said that it feels scary to show my piece to other people and I wish that I didn't have to do that. I understand this fear completely and I don't want to seem like I don't care about the anxiety that this thing brings but I would just like to ask that showing your piece to other people like let's say that you're doing art practice by for example watching these videos and painting for yourself. If you're doing a practice piece think about posting that piece to Instagram, would that make you work a little bit harder? Would it make you check your composition a little bit more carefully or process your colors just a little bit more with care and love? I think that makes a difference. But if you label it as practice, it's kind of a throwaway thing. It's a kind of like a, it's a label that you can put on your piece of art that slightly protects it from criticism and from other people watching it. I'm not saying that you should throw yourself in for other people's criticism and let them decide how you should grow artistically but just showing your art to other people I think ha having commitment to that makes you at least it makes me work a little bit harder on my pieces when I know that I don't do paintings that I just throw in the trash bin and that's why I don't start at 10 different paintings and work on them all at once I try to finish everything that I make and if I'm doing freelance commissions, I have only one of those at the background that I'm doing at the same time as I'm doing my own paintings. But if I have three different projects that I'm working on at the same time, I know that there's a great risk that I won't put in the work to finish one of those. And that is usually my own work that I just gets trashed. So I try not to let that happen ever. So finishing your 
pieces. I think that is incredibly important for progress and also having this sort of like social pressure of like showing your art to other people online. It just makes you feel a bit more accountable. But let's say that, for example, that you bought one of my video courses that I don't have <laughs> freely available to anyone. But let's say that I had a tutorial course and you made it and you were watching like, for example, two hours of tutorial video and you are trying to process the information for yourself. And if you ask yourself, is this going to be on the test? That already says that like you really don't care about your own progress and you're not putting yourself on the line for that progress to happen. So I would, this is just me, but I would recommend that you take the word practice and just not use it when it comes to making art. Because even if you're doing an art assignment or a practice thing, you still want to aim for a finished illustration or something finished that you can show to others. Because that will make you work harder on that piece and even if it's practice, that will make you learn faster as well. It's kind of like forcing yourself to care in a way and I want you to care about your art and also it makes you work harder on what you're saying with the piece because a practice is kind of missing emotion or message and it doesn't have to be. You can say things with a piece that is part of your practice or progress to becoming an artist. Because what I want to do with this channel is not just make you a better painter. Don't be just a painter, be an artist. And I know you can. I know you have stuff you want to say and you're putting all this time into art. Use it for something good that you believe in and something that makes you feel kind of more yourself <laughs> when you're doing that practice and having those good emotions come and be associated with your own art that makes you feel more motivated to make your own art. I don't know what that is for you. That's personal for everybody. For me, it's nature and I think nature has this healing power for me at least when I look at it, when I paint it, but when I travel, I try to take a lot of photographs of just something that is not very photographic, but just plants and nature and sunlight. It's just something that I I never get tired of and when I paint nature it has the same effect on me like when I'm running out in the woods it kind of makes me forget myself and feel like just like a smaller part of this world it makes me feel less selfish and those moments are the ones when I feel I think the most happy when I'm painting this might sound weird but I, I have this feeling that I'm forgetting myself when I'm deep into the painting process and when the painting kind of has enough elements to have that level of, I don't know, realism or mood that it sucks me in, I understand that the painting is more important than I am and that's why it's so easy to finish my pieces because I feel like my art is important and I'm not just saying that that my art is important. I think everyone's art is important, but I think it's also important to kind of say that to yourself. Because if you don't feel like your art is important, why would you finish it? Here I'm working with this sort of like glow in the lower half of the iceberg, and this glow is targeted in this one specific area for a very important purpose, and that is just to highlight this a uh, small, small character in the foreground. And I think I'm working way too zoomed in with this dude, by the way. I wish that I would have a, a lot more brush economy and just like few strokes of like drawing that guy in, but it just seemed to need a lot more work. So the detail of the iceberg is something that I went back and forth of like how many details do I need to have in the cracks of the ice and to show the transparency of the ice because you are not just seeing the detail of the surface but you are also seeing the blurred detail that is hidden beneath the surface of the ice. Then to contrast it I decided to add a little bit of snow on top of the iceberg and I think this adds a bit more contrast between detail and less detailed areas because the snow, while it still has light and shadow, it doesn't have transparency and I think it allows the image to breathe a little bit more. By the way, in this part of the painting process, my camera died. It just showed this 
signal that I haven't seen before that it's too hot and you could have fried an egg on it. So I put it into the fridge and I use this other camera for this small part when I'm painting these elements on the sand. I don't know how you feel about this image quality, but I don't know, it blends in <laughs> well enough. Some of these technical camera things are the ones that you just constantly keep learning more and more about. And it's one of those things that I completely underestimated when I started this YouTube channel. It's just how hard it is to put a video together. I mean, when you watch YouTube videos, it seems so like effortless and fun, but at the same time, it's kind of fascinating and rewarding just how many skills you end up learning when you're making videos and it just seems like it's never ending and I'm no way trying to say that I'm good at this YouTube stuff but <laughs> at least I've learned a lot <laughs> since the beginning. If anybody is trying to guess what these plans are I have no idea. I mean realism in these things is just something that doesn't really interest me that much like botanical accuracy. If somebody wants to do like scientific pictures of plants go for it. That can be your thing it doesn't have to be mine. At first I really hated painting these palm trees because it just seemed like they are a huge time sink for how little they bring to the image like when it comes to like visual impact and importance. But when I started painting these like different hue variations to the leaves I think it got quite addictive and I really ended up enjoying that part. It's just when I started doing it I thought that it's going to be like a nightmare but it was fun. Snow is a really challenging element and ice because they are part of this hard category of elements that is very directly labeled as white in your brain. So when you're painting you actively have to fight against the urge of like using any white at all. There is no white in this whole painting, not even in the lightest highlights of this iceberg. Trying to paint something that is white or can be associated as white but still have hue variations that is really difficult. But since I was talking about practice earlier, this is also something that can really help you understand light and shadow and the color temperature relationships. In this situation, the light is warm and the shadows are cool. In no other element is this more apparent than when you're painting a white object. So just paying attention to what the temperature of your light is, like that can have a huge impact on all of your art and just trying to remember that you never have white light in a scene. So that seems simple, but honestly it's the most important thing. The clouds in the sky, they are on their own separate layer and they are on top of the sky background layer and behind the iceberg layer. And because they are on their own separate layer, I was able to lock the transparency of the pixels and paint the lights on the clouds without worrying about complex selections. And this way it's very easy to add this sort of like three-dimensional look to the clouds if you have enough darkness in the clouds that you can paint light on top of them. But okay, Again, if you paint white clouds, you can't do highlights on white clouds. So avoiding white is so handy in so many cases, including clouds. And when they are on their own separate layer, it's also easier to use, for example, the transform tools and use warp to just kind of like bend the cloud elements to the composition so that they are not distracting. The color of the sand in this lower half of the painting, I wanted it to be sort of like a mirror to the color of the sky because those clouds they have a pretty similar hue and tone so I wanted the lower half of this painting to balance that out by just having like a callback to that color like as a bookmark where the painting ends and the contrasts kind of get lower and lower to the bottom half of the image and this is something that I do pretty much on all edges of the painting because I never want to have the edges of the painting to have like very high contrast elements if it's in any feasible way avoidable. So that's what I'm doing at the edge. 
At this point when I'm painting the border in the lower half of the image, I'm also flattening down the lower half of the border with the foreground elements so that the border and these sort of like mounds of sand and trees and green stuff in front, they are all on the same layer. And this just keeps things easier for me to manage because too many layers just makes it really hard to work. Here I'm trying additive lights to the top right corner of the image, but in the end I ended up toning them down quite a bit because it was just like reacting in a way that I didn't like with the colors on the top right corner. But I ended up having these glows kind of like added to the layers below and this I did by just copying that light layer and using it as a clipping mask to these foreground elements and then merging it down. So I am not adding this sort of light to the sky itself but just the elements that are in front of it. And that way all of this time like fiddling around with the glows <laughs> doesn't go to waste but it's building up atmosphere in the picture because there is this element of tree in the foreground and it's this like one vertical beam that is coming from the bottom of the image to the sky area of the painting basically and just having the same value and hue in the bottom half and the top half of the image made it look very stiff somehow it just didn't have the sense of scale as it now has with this sort of like slight shift in hue and value with the glow added as additive layer on top of it and it just like cuts some of those darkest shadows from the top half of the palm tree. I really wanted to paint more grass to the lower half of the image, but I just tried to restrain myself, maybe for some other image, I don't know. Just doing these rainbow color pieces has left me wanting to do like certain things that I would normally probably do more, which is green stuff. And it's probably like good to challenge myself a little bit, but yeah, there are certain topics that I miss painting in more quantity, but only two, I think I have only two stripes to go, so the finish this line is almost here. This has been a really long project and I don't mean just this painting but like just the whole rainbow flag project. I'm proud that I made it though. I think it has been an interesting journey but next year during pride definitely I'm going to do the current version of the pride flag because it has less colors. I think that will be more fun. Here I decided to take all of the realism that I know about painting C and then just throw all of that to the trash bin because I wanted to make glittery sparkly water, god damn it. <laughs> so I am going to and I'm not going to apologize for it and it's going to be sparkly because I say so and this is just so much fun, oh my god. Even just watching this right now is just like making me have all the feels of painting the sea because it's just so much fun. I'm adding some of these sparks on top of the water layer on an additive layer. As you see on the top right corner, this color that I'm using to paint with, it's um, super dark and that is because I'm using an additive layer. It's already kind of like bumping up the value to a very extreme. So if I used, for example, light blue on an additive layer that would just be white and blow out the highlights and wouldn't add this sort of like vibrancy to the sea. So with additive layer always be careful because you can really go out of bounds with the values and the saturation and this piece is already super high in saturation so this is not easy to do but it's super fun. Okay as much as I love doing this like sparkly bits there are some limits to how much time I want to spend on one element so I'm just like using the left and right hand detail and I'm copying them to the middle of the image because I don't think a lot of people will care that much. Like maybe somebody will like passionately feel like I should paint it differently but they are also free to paint their own paintings so it's fine. Also did I mention that this is five hours of work? <laughs> I mean come on I have other paintings to paint as well. I added several different versions of these shadows of the iceberg because I didn't want the shadow to be harsh because it's coming through a semi-transparent object on the water which itself is very transparent so the surface of the water will never have super sharp shadows in these sort of situations so I wanted to emulate that by creating several different shadows of different opacity levels and I added the shadow to be the darkest near the edge of the iceberg but as you can see where the surfer dude is in the foreground I kind of like faded out that line so that it wouldn't cut the character in half. 
This part might seem like I have completely lost my mind, but all of these color adjustments are just for this cap. And after I had found the correct yellow color, I used a mask on the whole character and then I, with just white, I painted out this like yellow part of the cap. So I didn't have to paint the shadows again, because again, the whole rush economy thing is like my main focus with the dude, because I don't want it to be like full painting on its own, because that would look weird. Just the brush stroke density is something that I try to be aware of. Even with these parts, like with the leaves, there's a great temptation to use a smaller brush with these foliage details, but I want to be consistent with the look of the rest of the painting. So no part should be like, like too important when it's not the main focal point. And these things that are at the corners of the image, they are definitely not the main focal point. There's no fast way to paint this sort of foreground detail, because it's too close to the camera that you can't really get away with copy and pasting elements, like with the background elements. So it's just a lot of hand painting everything and trying to be aware of those contrast areas. Somebody in the comment section asked me earlier why I don't have a Patreon page. And these videos, they take a really long time for me to edit and put together. And just the whole process <laughs> takes a lot of time. For example, for this this video I accidentally just like rendered it wrong the first time and that was four hours of work <laughs> completely lost and having a patreon page I respect people who do that and there's nothing wrong with making money with the art that you are making I just want to be very clear with this part I, I don't think you should like make artists lives harder just because they are trying to survive in the world I don't think we have a problem of artists making too much money so Definitely try to be respectful. But for me, if I had a Patreon page making content for that and also for this channel at the same time, it's just I feel like it would be too much work, at least for now, because I'm not quick at editing, making these voiceovers that takes time as well. I just don't want to put myself into a situation where I would completely overwork myself and burn out. Because if there's one thing that I have learned through these like last five years and all the difficulties that I had and the way that I survived them is that the most valuable thing that I have in my life is my relationship with my art and I need to be protecting that by setting up boundaries like pretty aggressively and just being aware of like when I'm enjoying painting and when I'm not enjoying painting and if I make it too difficult for me in a sense that I have all this time pressure that for example running a Patreon page would bring and then people expecting different stuff because they are paying money. I think that would give me so much pressure in combination with making art that it would make art less enjoyable for me and because it is my most valuable thing that I have in my life I don't want to risk it <laughs> at least now because I know how long these videos take me to do and if I had for example double the content that I needed to do and half of it would be just for the fraction of the audience I think it would kind of break me quite easily to be honest also, now getting back to these palm trees once more, I think this is probably like the fifth time that I'm painting these. Remember that I said that I hated these? I love these palm trees. Like, <laughs> this was just like a love-hate relationship that completely flipped in the process of making this painting. And now they have all these sort of like different rich hues of yellows and greens. And I think I'm pretty happy that I managed to stop like being a big baby about how difficult palm trees are to paint and then just committed to enjoying the process and I think it shows I'm pretty happy with the way that they turned out. I'm using these curves separately for the snow layer in the iceberg and that is to control the shadows and the lights but I'm careful of like these white areas because I don't want the snow to have white spots because that looks like overexposed photograph. 
adjusting the colors when a painting is done, to me, I think that is one of the most underrated aspects about painting because it can just like pull in all those colors together in a way that makes sense for your mood. And once you have almost finished piece, the color adjustments take so little time and are so important for the visual impact that I highly recommend paying attention to that part. And just when you have all of your different elements, a way that you can do this more easily is just flatten down everything on as few layers as possible. So you will have easier time adjusting those layers separately and then just using, for example, curves and the individual RGB curves to make sure that, for example, if you want to have warm light areas, you can just slightly tweak that in the curves. And if you feel like it's affecting your values in your painting in a negative way, you can do it on a separate hue or color layer and then just flatten that down so you won't be affecting the values of your painting and just the hues slightly. These are like tweaks, they are in no way big tweaks, but just something that is easy to do and there's no reason like not to adjust the colors when the painting is done. And here we are at the end, literally. Thank you for joining me for the process of this painting video and I hope that you don't just like watch these videos passively but you paint something for yourself. And I recommend that you don't copy what I have already painted because you have your own things that you can say and your own unique way of looking at things and we want to see and hear what you think about the world. Focus on what you have to say and don't practice. Make finished pieces and get better while you're doing that. Okay. I'm Mikko and I'll see you in the next video. Bye. I'm actually waving. Why, why am I waving at the microphone? <laughs> okay, bye.